everybody, it's Tyler here at Bex. We're checking in 210T Titan coming out of Alberta. This team here rocking in their division so far, currently in art and number two as of uh, recording here. So looking for a big day here at Baxter Rose out of them. A lot of great stuff coming out of 210T. Let's talk about what some changes they've been making. They actually took off their uh, catapult mechanism on here and their C-tier climb. We'll talk more about some of that philosophy as they get ready for playoffs. But some really cool things as well, putting bearings inside of their wheels. Uh, G tier climb that they have as well too. No trap door, which we'll be talking about why they intentionally chose that route. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. James, we mentioned in the intro here uh, that you're running some ball bearings inside your wheel. So I'd love to hear more about uh, how that's worked out, some uh, future plans for other years as well too, and then I'd love to talk about your intake. Yeah, of course. So we actually decided to put ball bearings inside of our wheels and it just inserts just like that. So we took a drill bit and we are able to actually drill out the inside of the wheels and the ball bearings just slide inside and they stay in with a friction fit. We chose these um, ball bearing wheels as you can virtually put as much weight as you want into your robot and it doesn't um, harm the, the friction of the drive chain at all. So this allows us to build um, basically anything we want on our bot and still have a great um, drive chain friction. And also for future games, if there's a stacking game or any game where your bot is naturally heavier, it also pairs really well with the ball bearing wheels. Very cool. I'm talking about on your intake, when we were talking earlier, your team chose to not go with the trap door mechanism. So yeah. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the philosophy for it and just kind of how the tri ball uh, interacts with your intake overall. Of course, yeah. So in our robot, you can see we have a no trap door mech and an open intake. So this actually allows us to drop the tri ball right into the intake and then we can just expel it out. And um, having this open, open intake with no trap door, it allows for a smoother entrance of the ball. And we don't actually need a trap door in this case since our robot is like a box like shape where any tri ball that is placed in our robot will always slide towards our intake. And this has been very um, useful. Are there any concerns in regards to like tri ball stealing or anything like that at all potentially? Yeah, so on our intake, we actually have this piece of Lexan and this is um, specifically made to prevent tri ball stealing. So if we are able to get underneath people's uh, flex wheels, they will actually ride up this piece of Lexan and pop up their intake which then allows us to scoop in and steal tribals. I love the thought process that's gone into that. One thing I want to ask you as well too, looking from uh, prior competitions, like provincials coming in here to uh, Vex Rolls, any major changes on that standpoint that you made or are you rocking the same thing? Yeah, so this is actually our first time running this piece of Lexan okay. and we found it to be pretty useful. We are able to steal a few tribals from other people and we, we really like it. And obviously working out great so far, right? With how yeah. well you're being ranked and what a great day yesterday you had. So let's pass it over to Max, talk more about on here, uh, your team. Uh, had a C-tier climb uh, with that Kata as well too, but you're not uh, running it anymore. The, I totally get the not running a catapult anymore, right? Because you're done with skills, that sort of right, thing. But right. I'd love to hear more about why you took that off. And then we'll be talking about your G-tier your G climb that you have as well too. All right, so I'm going to start with the G-tier climb. And this is our first time actually running the hang. And it was inspired by Inception. So the reason why we chose this is because so many teams at AI Worlds are, are going for higher and higher hangs. So the higher you go, the more points you're going to get, as long as you get that uh, top tier hang, right? Uh, now this this hang gets a G tier because uh, it actually hooks on. It actually hooks on to the very top of the pole. And then by using a power takeoff all the way on the bottom here. So for your PTO, is that taking all your drive base motors onto that or are you just running? Right, it's well? taking all of the drive base motors. So by using two pistons, that re-divert uh, the power of the uh, uh, the power of the drivetrain to the wench. That will slowly twist this piece of string around, so it makes it taut and brings the robot in. So this will slowly pull tighter and tighter, and then by actuating these pistons, it pulls it down, and the robot can continue climbing the rest of the way down. 
like this on the very top of the pole. Um, and how long does it take you typically to get that uh, climb? Like how, from line up to actually doing climb, how long does it take you? Typically, it will take around four to five seconds. But if it takes too long to line up, it may take up to seven seconds sure. for that. Um, in the scenario which where our uh, alleyway is completely open, we will actually go for bowls and then just ditch the hang because we can run up to two bowls in that time period, which essentially cancels out two hangs worth of points. And we'll be talking about your short wings in a little bit as well too, and some of that strategy behind uh, rocking that. But talk to me about right. on here, your uh, catapult that you took off and then the uh, C tier and why you, uh, you know, when you're looking at it from a weight savings, why that outweighed having a C tier climb. All right, so I guess I'll start with the C tier climb actually. We, so we had a four piston C tier hang right in the middle of our robot just yesterday. But because um, of the weight of our robot, that was way too heavy. We had trouble crossing the border, which is why we decided to take it off last night so that we would uh, have a faster border cross for elimination matches while still just focusing on our inception climb. Now these, this is the catapult. And it has these attachments on the bottom, these linear slides here that essentially click into place without having to use any screws. Uh, to attach the catapult so on the robot when we had the uh, c tier climb it would attach directly on by sliding in like this way wait under the under the inception hang and then we'd just put it down like that so the inception hang so the g tier hang would just fall down on it and it would lay nice and flat so essentially we would only use this for skills runs because of course it is very heavy, but as it is detachable, we can build it as heavy as we want. Um, very cool. One of the couple things I want to wrap up with this robot here is talking about your uh, sleds. When we were talking earlier, uh, you're running uh, some interesting rollers on your sleds as well too. Uh, so David, talk to me more about that. And then the uh, short wings that you're running as well. I'd love to hear more about some of the strategy and mass strategy behind how the short wings work. Yeah, so first of all, both of our sides have been, um, this one has tangential sleds and this one has concave sleds. So the way we run tangential sleds is that the sled is directly tangent to the wheel. So instead of bumping the entire robot up, it directly connects the, the barrier onto the wheel. The back sled typically does the same thing, but we use a different approach of um, curved sled that makes us easier in terms of the initial velocity on ramming the bar and how it brings it up and connects to the wheel. So both of the two type of sleds can let us have a lower um, starting angle of the barrier and then a lower ending angle of the barrier. Yeah, and also um, for the wings, we use a super tiny low profile um, short wings because of our strategy. So the wings are inverted when the piston extends, the wing retracts, and when the piston retracts, the wing extends. So we decided to run this over traditional wings from um, from inside to outside here because of how previous matches, when people start ramming onto our piston, our piston breaks, and also our bowling strategies. So for a short wing, we can only open one wing in the alley. That makes us a huge advantage in terms of ball control, so we can put four or even six ball at the same time. Last thing I want to wrap up with, is there anything on your uh, controls themselves that you want to mention, Max, in regards to some custom work you're done? Right, so this is actually called a scuff controller, which is a 3D printed attachment onto our controller. And it, it adds these little tabs, or you can press with your pinkies and your ring fingers. Now this is the second one that we are using because our first version used the front two fingers, but it was too difficult to use the intake and our other functions while also using those two top two fingers. So this design directly relates to the placement of our wings on the robot. So this, say this back, this back portion here would now uh, correlate to the back left wing on the actual robot. And, and then the top right, let's say here, would correlate to the top right on the actual robot as well. So it's easy for me as the driver to, to just think of it in 3D um, and how, as if like the controller were the robot, so I can activate it all four at once or however I like on the field. 
Very intuitive design overall, 210T. Congratulations on a great run here so far. We're rooting for you and hopefully big things coming out in your division as well too. So good luck. Thanks for telling us more about your robot. It's a lot of great things for teams to learn and we can't wait to see how you do here at Vex Rolls. Thanks a lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.